Welcome back to the Cricket Today podcast on Thursday, February 15. We are back for an awesome series between India and England, probably one of the most exciting series of the year so far in cricket. So we're happy to be talking about that. I'm your host, Liam McCain, also known as the Stats Guy. I'm here with Marcus Barzano. Doesn't mind a bit of baseball, a bit of driving ball. How you going, Marcus? What do you mean I don't mind? I hate it. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's not the spirit. That's all we're talking about today, so you better you better get up, get up and about for it. Uh, we're also here with Leo Malone. How are you going, Leo? Good, thanks, Stats Guy. Yeah, I'm unlike Marcus. I, I'm not a fan of both these teams, but this is going to be a great test match, a uh, great series. So um, I'm just excited that cricket is the winner. Yes, that's the that Cricket is the winner here. As Aussies, we're not really supporting either side, but we're really happy to talk about it because there's some of the best cricketers going head to head. So let's get right into it. We're, today, we're going to cover a huge preview of that India England third test in Rajkot, uh, chat about some ins and outs, our signature Yeah Nars, which we'll start with, and of course, our match prediction and player of the match. There's a lot of guys that you could pick for player of the match. Really, been some big, perfor- big individual performances in this series, which we'll touch on. So let's uh, start with our signature Yeah Nars, lads. I'm going to read out the uh, first one. The loss of Virat Kohli will decide this test match and series. So he's obviously out for the series with personal reasons. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, nah. I think, yeah. Oh. I, I think, yeah. I think um, we saw in the last, uh, sorry, in the first uh, test match that they were a little bit um, light batting wise. And I think there's just sort of missing, they, they have players there that can be dominant and put it back on the bowlers, but they're probably missing that one more and Coley does that for fun and I think Coley would have looked at this England attack of you know three sort of inexperienced spinners and had a field day and I think that is a huge huge loss that I think England will will pounce on to be honest I think Marcus is thinking otherwise yeah what do you, what do you got for that one Mark? Yeah, so but- I'm interested I agree with Leo but what, yeah what do you reckon Oh, I'm disagreeing here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go no. Um, I, I don't think India have relied on Virat Kohli in in probably in the past two or three years yeah. um, in Test match cricket. Um, there's obviously that there's India have plenty of players to come in and, and perform. Um, what we saw with was there's more than capable of making a big score. Jay Swell scored a double century um, in the in the previous Test match. So I just think that there's, they're not too reliant on, on Virat Kohli at the moment. Um, but I do think that India have enough to, to score a decent score against an England batting lineup that you look at them now, no one's really performing other than Zach Crawley in that batting lineup. And when I say performing, he's scored like a 70 and a 30. And so he's not going on and making a big score either. So as long as, someone can deliver for India, then I, I think they've got plenty um, in the batting lineup to to put up a fight against Basball. Yeah, against Basball. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on, Leo, you mentioned about the England spinners. I would have said before the series started, oh, that a bit more experienced uh, Indian spinners, a bit, a bit of an experienced bowling lineup for England, but I had a look. They've got 10 more wickets, the England spinners, than Indian spinners in India. That's like unheard, that's unheard of, and that's, that one, that's that really shocked me. So I do think Coley could have made a difference with that and probably lessen those wickets because he's so good against spin. He's so good against pace and spin, but he really is good against spin. But that one really shocked me. I don't know about you boys. That that was really weird. They've got 10 more wickets than the Indian spinners. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like I feel when sides go to India, they play two frontline spinners and England yep. have gone with three. And I think it's an incredibly smart move, albeit they are inexperienced. But I think that's what sides need to do more is play – three frontline spinners and that extra spinner is just sort of not only having an impact themselves, but is helping the other spinners have a bit of an impact. It's not all yep. on the two spinners. So I think that that's something to, to raise. And I think that's sort of the way um, to go forward to play in India as well as the subcontinent. I think it's a, definitely a worthwhile tactic. Yeah. I had a look. They, I think they ended up dropping Bashir for this one for Mark yeah. Wood. So they're yep. changing it up a little bit. I think this pitch in Rajkot is a bit more suited, a bit greener for the fast bowlers. And Mark Wood, of course, is a great bowler. He can use his pace there. But mm. yeah, their spinners, spinners have been going all right. And yeah, definitely surprised a few compared to the uh, Indian spinners. Uh, all right, another year now I'm going to go for. I've written this one down. Jimmy Anderson is the goat of English cricket. How the hell is he still playing at 55 years old? How old is he actually? 30? Is he 30? Yeah? No, he's, he's 40. 40. Yeah, he's 40, sorry, yeah. yeah. I keep rounding it down because I just can't believe how old he is. But uh, yeah, is he the goat of English cricket, lads? He's got the third most wicket. Oh, sorry, 
Third most wickets, I think, in uh, Test match history. He's got the most wickets ever for England. 41. I've, I've even put him down even more. He's 41, <laughs> and he's still performing like this. It's unbelievable. What do you guys reckon? Well, is I can't like who else? You There's got a few uh, others, Beefy, Ian Botham, I reckon. Yeah, so. yeah Ian Botham. Uh, well, Jimmy Anderson isn't knighted yet. Like, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Botham. Um, I think he will be. But honestly, I think he, I think he is. I think he could be. Um, I'm not. I don't think in terms of like icon status. Like, he doesn't have the personality like no. Freddie Flintoff had or sorry, Ian Botham had. But I think he's a lot more quiet and. Um, and respectful about himself. Yeah. But in terms of his longevity and, and his pure numbers, uh, no, no other bowler that I can really think of is, is has done it like Jimmy Anderson consistently. Yeah. No, I'll give you that. What do you reckon, Marcus? I mean, sorry, Leo. <laughs> We've already heard from Marcus. <laughs> well, I think I think I agree. Um, low bar, though. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I think, yeah, he, he's been a phenomenal bowler for a long period of time. He's probably going to play next Ashes. I, I swear every Ashes we go like, okay, that's the last we see of him. And then, you know, a year and a half later, two years later, he's, he's back out there still trotting around. I think, yeah, he just reminds you that club cricketer who's like 60 years old. Yeah. That just, the keeper's up to the stumps and he just hits top of off every time and you just can't, you can't get him away for anything. He, that's all he reminds you of. And honestly, if he, he could do that till, till he's 60. Why not? <laughs> that is, yeah, that is a great comparison there. You, yeah, those older guys that just hit the right spot every time. He's he's unbelievable. For a fast bowler as well, I can understand a spinner possibly playing in their 40s, possibly a middle order bat that doesn't have to yeah, play too much, comes in and plays their role. But a fast bowler who's had some injury, back injuries, all fast bowlers had back injuries, leg, all the shoulder injuries and things like that. The fact that he's still playing at 41 is unbelievable. And he's still getting picked every week. Obviously, England have a very good uh, side and he's still getting picked. So, yeah, good on him. Yeah, and, well, yeah it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm 23 and I'm, I'm seeing a, I, I've been seeing a Cairo recently about my back because of, because of uh, being a pace bowler. Uh, so, I don't know how, honestly, I don't know how he does it at a ripe age of 40. Maybe ring up, bring up Jimmy. I reckon we'll have to get him on. And uh, he tells his secret. I reckon he has he got Mister Miyagi behind the scenes, possibly with with the cups, uh, just making him feel good every single game. I'm I'm not sure, but it is crazy because yeah, even yeah, actually, just, as you said, Mark, because even young guys, if you're bowling can, uh, a lot of overs, you're going to get sore. So I don't know how he does it. Just that's why he's probably the goat. Just sort of like that LeBron type area in the NBA, just longevity to keep going and going and going. So that might yeah, he's the goat for me. That's a big yeah on uh, on my front. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on before we get into our match predictions is uh, India have a couple of debuts. Uh, Serafaz Khan and Dhruv Jural are going to debut. Jural is a keeper, I believe. He's taking over Barat, who wasn't too too flashy uh, for India the first two test matches. So that's interesting. I, that's why I'm a little bit worried about India's batting lineup and their depth. Obviously, they got two debutants. Khan was unbelievable. I've just read before in first-class cricket, so he's got his chance. You've got to be unbelievable in first-class cricket in India. You've got to average over 100, I think, in pretty much first-class cricket because there's so many to choose from. What do you guys reckon about the debut and for these guys to debut? And does that stuff up uh, India's batting lineup at all? I think that I think the depth you're right, Stats guy hitting now on the head is a little bit worrying. Um, mm. But they do have other guys uh, coming in. Obviously, Jadeja's returning uh, yep. with KL Rahul out. Uh, but still, yeah, the one thing I've been concerned about India is that their their tail is is pretty long. Oh, obviously, once you get past Jadeja, mm. it's it's really like slim pickings because um, they're they're out and out bowlers aren't. Uh, very good with the bat, to be honest. Um, no, traditional 10 and 11s, you'd say, like a lot of yeah. that little clump yeah, at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not too worried because I think they've got the quality at the top of the order uh, over the English batsman. Yep. Just about. Uh, so I think they can still post a competitive score. Yep. No, I agree with that one. What do you reckon there? Yeah, well, I'm just looking at Safraz Khan, and I think I remember him years ago playing for Bangalore, which is my beloved IPL team, uh, oh. <laughs> RCB. Um, but he, I'm looking at his stats here. He averages nearly 70 in first-class cricket, 69.85, awesome. high score of 301 not out. Whew. He is only 26 years old, so he's coming into his prime. I think it's a very good selection, this. I'm going to be watching him. I'm really keen to see how he goes. I think he's one that can have an instant impact. 
and maybe put it back on the England bowlers as well. Yeah, well, in, I, as you as you said, if he's played that short format really well as well in the IPL, he could he could yeah, drive and ball the opposite of Basball. We're saying uh, we said at the start of the podcast could could put it on, back on him. That'd be pretty fun to watch. Yeah, in in saying all that, I, it is two debutants and. Mm. That does worry me because they don't have necessarily the experience in the big moments to when the game's on the line to win it. So, yep. yeah, it's going to be interesting. But Safraz Khan, I'm very, very excited to see how he goes. Yep. No, I really rate that. I'm, I'm excited to see how he goes as well. It's uh, 3 p.m. our time, actually, I just remembered. So definitely chuck that on in the middle of the workday here. All right, let's get into the uh, the big calls, the match predictions, and the man of the match, lads. We'll start with you, Marcus. Who have you got to win and play of the match? Oh, I'm leaning towards uh, India in this one because my pure hate for baseball. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's going to be a good, good test match. Uh, but my man in the match prediction, um, you mentioned... The pitch is probably a little bit more, not I wouldn't say more suited to pace bowling, but more than usual that, Indian pitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that England have brought in a paceman for a spinner just sort of proves that you know uh, they can have an impact on this one. And I'm going to go Jasper Brummer, who's oh. already had an impact on this Test series. Incredible fast bowler, probably. Geez, he'd be top three in the world easily. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, and and fighting for that number one spot. Uh, probably with a couple of, of Aussie bowlers, but geez, I think yeah, he could have a deadly, deadly impact and, and just burn through this uh, England batting order, which I'll, I want to qu- touch on quickly. I think is under for Joe Root has got yeah. to do something now. He's yeah. got to, the pressure's really on him because oh, he's really struggled this series, hasn't he? I don't, I'm not sure if he scored a score past 30. No, he's had a lot of twenties, couple of fives, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's really struggled. So I'm looking out for for Joe Root to have an impact, but Jasper Bumrah will be my man of the match. Don't mind that. He got man of the match last one with nine for I believe Bumrah was these Yorkers with literally stick cricket style sending the uh, Indian uh, sorry the English batsman sideways. So I'm excited to watch a bit of Bumrah. Who have you got, uh, Leo? Yeah, I'm going against Marcus. I think Ooh. England will win this. It'll be an awesome test match. And I think Zach Crawley at the top of the order will be the man of the match for England. Uh, he's had, as we mentioned, a few starts um, this series. Sort of Pope has been the most impressive batsman. So I think Crawley will will step up and and really take over this series. And I, I think we we... Well, we didn't touch on it, but it's here in the run sheet. Stokes a hundred tests, so I think he'll yes. have a, a big a big role in this in this match with the bat. I can sort of see Crawley um, sort of hanging in there, batting the way he does. Few wickets fall around around him. Stokes comes in and sort of plays that anchoring role, which will suit Crawley perfectly. So I really, yeah, I, I just really like him to to perform and. Yeah, England a win. Why not? Let's let's change it up. Let's get a bit of spice going here. Yeah, all right. Don't mind that. Don't mind that. Uh, I'm going to go India, though, as well. I'm going to agree with Marcus. Uh, I think, yeah, that they've sort of bounced back. They know that basketball uh, mentality now. They were probably a bit shell-shocked in that first test, really adjusted their lines with the ball, bowled it, pitched it up a bit more, especially Boomer with those Yorkers. I think India will get a 2-1 series lead here uh, in Rajka. And then I'm going to go Jadeja. He didn't play the second test. It was really good in the first test, 87 uh, in the first innings of the first test. Then you got a couple of wickets as well in that first test. I think he can just have an impact with both bat and ball. Uh, obviously, he's got an incredible record bowling in India and batting. He's just can pull out an easy 87 or a 50 or things like that. I reckon he could make at least 150 and get five or six wickets throughout the match and just have that perfect all-rounders performance. So I'm going to go Jadeja for my man of the match. All right, I think that's it for the Cricket Today show, lads. We've covered all of uh, India, England. A few of us think uh, India's going to take a 2-1 league. Leo reckons Basball is going to take a 2-1 lead. Who, who would have thought Leo talking up Basball? That's, uh, that's a, what a sight on this show. Uh, we'll be back with this tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's show is a bit of a special interview with Code Sports journalist Daniel Cherney. So check that out that I did with him. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and get right around the show. Subscribe on your podcast apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Like and review it, would you? Chuck a follow to Cricket Today and Cricket Today AU all over the socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and X. Check out Football Today AU for all your Premier League, Matildas, Socceroos, all your football and soccer needs that are on Football Today as well, that podcast. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, send in any questions via the socials, anything you want to chat to us about. That's it, I think. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Cheers, that's guy. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, that's guy. Thanks, Joe, for producing. Thanks to me. That's another episode of Cricket Today Done. We're out. <laughs>